In today's episode, Coach Katie is back again for another episode, and this is going to be all about how and why you should take care of yourself as a mom. Make sure you share this with another mom that you think needs to listen to this. Like, share, comment, subscribe, all of those things, but we'll catch you on the inside. Now, I know I started off last episode with an over and underrated, but I have to do it again because last night we went to dinner and we tried out something that we were told was going to change our lives and that we should really get in on it. So the topic was espresso martinis. Now, I... I don't know if I was just dumb, possibly, that I was thinking, you know, martinis, you got the vodka, the gin, whatever your choice is there, and then you got olives. So when they're telling me a chocolate espresso martini, I'm like, how in the hell does chocolate and olives go together? And they're like, no, no, no olives. It's just like the coffee and the vodka. And I was like, okay, I could probably get behind that. So we went to dinner last night, and what do you know? There's an espresso martini on the menu. And Charlotte, Katie, Alex, Miguel, and I all gave it a go. So, Katie, what are your your thoughts on an espresso martini? Zero out of ten. <laughs> Do not recommend. Um, I just was not impressed. Not a good time. But that's okay. If that's your drink of choice, you do you, boo. I also am not a vodka person, so maybe that ruined it for me that first instant taste of vodka i was like nope this tastes nope. like shit was not having it so i don't know maybe tequila we saw i, could I do think tequila. a direct quote was this shit's nasty <laughs> <laughs> yeah that probably was it insert clip here tastes like shit <laughs> Um, but yeah, not not a fan, not a fan. That's okay. And we also ordered the one, well, one and like for all us to all share. tiny <laughs> sips from different parts of the glass. And who who liked it? Did you you like I, it? I thought it was all right. So I, from your reaction, <laughs> I was like, this is going to taste like horseshit. This is going to be awful. You're welcome. Bro. And Charlotte's reaction wasn't very encouraging either. She <laughs> takes a sip, makes a face, and she's like, it's good. <laughs> good <laughs> and i'm like what what does that mean right you're not selling it yeah. very well and then katie almost spits it out and i'm like great i'm, I'm next literally almost choked and spit it out but that's okay <laughs> And so I took the sip and I was, ex- I think it was because I was expecting it to be so bad <laughs> that it ended up not being bad. Uh, so I, I do agree. Vodka is not my drink of choice. If you didn't know, Katie and I are tequila girlies. Tequila girlies. It's all, all the about way. the tequila. Yes. It's all about the margaritas. Yes. It's all about the chips and salsa. Yes. So that's what matters severely to me. Yes. At the end of the day. Yeah. And that's, I mean, tequila just over vodka any day. Yes. But so we'll give it a try. <laughs> we'll, we'll give it another shot, an espresso martini with tequila. Yes. But my vote for the vodka. Also, just, I mean, caffeine when I'm out for drinks, I don't know if I want that right. either. And being like 7 p.m. Yeah. I mean, I just. I would be like, can I have a decaf? Right. Espresso <laughs> Yeah, martini? literally. Oh, gosh. Mixing caffeine and alcohol. <laughs> Not not my cup of tea. (laughs) The days. (laughs) But today we are going ahead and talking about taking care of yourself as a mother. We know that this is something we've seen many a times with our clients and many staff members on physique development that are mothers that they pour from an empty cup often. And so Katie and I wanted to go over how to take care of yourself, why it's important, and give you some information on that. So Katie, why is it even important to take care of yourself? Well, for starters, like you said, we end up pouring from an empty cup all of the time. Um, but you really can't for so long. Maybe like a couple days when you know like you're at your wits end, you're like, well, you've got no choice but to show up essentially. So technically speaking, you do it either way. But there comes a time where you're just so fed up and it <laughs> affects everything that you're doing. And you have to take a break and pull back. And then if you can't show up for everyone else, you start to feel like crap about that too. And you don't want to constantly be digging yourself into this hole of just exhaustion and only taking care of those around you when you could simply just set aside like 30 minutes a day to go do something and refill that cup to show up for everyone else. 
And when she says simply, I want to make a little asterisk there that it is simple, but it doesn't mean it's easy. Correct. So by no means did I want someone listening to that and be like, this girl just thinks it's easy to set aside 30 minutes a day as a yeah, mother. that's true. <laughs> if you didn't listen to the episode before this, then I'll have it linked below. But Katie and I go through what is affected when with your fitness goals when you are pregnant. And we talked about some of her personal experience and how it is very difficult. Yes. But it is a simple simple task to do, but it does not make it easy. Correct. And it makes it worth it, for sure. <laughs> it makes it worth it, and it's simple in a sense of, like, thinking that it can get done. Like, yeah. in my mind, I'm like, oh, cool, 30 minutes. I can totally get that done. But it definitely doesn't happen every day. <laughs> and that's okay. So I get that, for sure. Like, it's not going to be something that's probably as consistent as you even want it to be. Um, but having good intentions yes. is Putting what we're looking for there. For yes. <laughs> now, with that, you talked about not being able to take care of others or possibly building up resentment towards them? Are there other things that happen to like you personally outside of that? Yeah. So when I am not taking care of myself, not only do you start resenting, whether it be like your spouse or even something as simple as like, I don't know, you see your friends who just get to go about their day, just mm -hmm. focus on themselves. And you're like, wow, like, I wish I could just focus on myself or like, that must be nice. When in reality, like those thoughts aren't helping anything. They're just pissing you off even more, <laughs> essentially. Um, and when I'm not taking care of myself, for me, that looks like going to the gym, getting movement, like eating quality foods. I also just start to feel like crap, like mentally and physically. I just lose some confidence in myself a little bit where like I like to carry myself a certain way. Once again, not every day is perfect. You're not going to feel <laughs> like a boss has be every day. <laughs> but when I'm not showing up for myself or taking that time to reset, I definitely see that start to dwindle down a little bit. And you start to just almost lose yourself with taking care of everything around you, like your your spouse, your family, work, chores, the dogs. Um, eventually, you're like, well, what the hell else am I? Like, what else am I doing outside of this? And that just is a domino effect from there, all tied together. A hundred percent. And I that's what I really vocalize to clients more than anything, is that you can't pour from that empty cup of Technically, we've all had the days where we're literally scraping the bottom of the right. cup and we're like, please give me another drop. Right. Or, you know, when your Stanley cup is empty and then you're waiting for the ice to melt, but it's like literally designed to not melt and you keep picking it up to try and take another sip, hoping some of it has melted and it's still not fucking melted because it's not supposed to. And so we've all had those moments coming from that Stanley cup, but... It's at the end of the day, like Katie said, you can only do it for so long. And truly, you have to look out for you because no one else can do it for you. Of course, you're going to have people in your life that care about you big time, whether that be friends, a spouse, family member, whatever it may be. There are going to be people that care deeply about you and want you to succeed and do things to help you succeed. But you can only do certain things for yourself. If I really wanted Katie to learn French, I can't learn French for her. I can only give her certain tools and hope that she does it. She has to take the initiative herself and she has to do it. So when I say no one else is going to do it for you, that's not a scorched earth of that means you should have no one in your life and you should only care about yourself, but you should be self full. And a lot of times people think that they're just being selfish. Yes. But it is actually extremely selfish to not be self-full because I can tell you there are so many times where I've been scraping the bottom of the barrel and I'm just like, this is what it takes. I just, it has to be this way because I have to show up for these different things. But I've also learned that if I do just take some time for myself, and it might not look the same every single day, if I take some time and I can pour into me. I am so much more pleasant to be around. I am so much more willing to give and take care of people. And I can take care of myself to have the energy, like you mentioned, <laughs> to take care of other people. So I think that a lot of times people think, oh, I can't take care of myself because other people need me. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's the reason you should take care of yourself exactly. because other people need you. And also to think about what example are you setting for like your child yeah. of they are seeing, oh, I shouldn't spend time for myself or I shouldn't take care of myself. I should just 
let myself run empty for other people. And you don't really want them to have that experience either. Exactly. I saw something, I don't remember if it was like on Instagram or what, um, but it was something about how if you're a mom, like people will ask you like, well, don't you feel guilty for going to the gym or don't you feel guilty for X, Y, and Z, like leaving your family at home? And it was like, no, but I do feel guilty when I'm thrashing out at everyone at home because I need time by myself. And that is the truest thing I think I've ever seen because I know we'll talk on it a little bit, but like when Fallon, my daughter was first born, I just didn't want to leave her ever. And I didn't want to like send her to school because I was like, I work from home. Like I should be able to do this. Like she needs me, all of these thoughts. And eventually I was like, I, I can't fucking do this. Like I need help. And for a little bit, people were like shocked that I almost like gave in. And I was like, well, I am starting to resent everyone around me because <laughs> I'm so tired of trying to do it all. And once I, she was a year. So it took me a full year to finally like send her to childcare. But once I did, I remember there was like, that was just one of the points that I had when I was finally like able to like flip that switch and like start prioritizing not only myself, but other things that are also important outside of taking care of her. And I could even feel that when she would come home, I was just happier. Like, obviously you're happy to see your kid no matter what. That's yeah. not what I'm saying. But I just like having that space and that little bit of a break just for three hours. I was like, I can't wait to see her now. Mm -hmm. And that, yeah, that is something that I try to remind my clients about who are postpartum and early on. Because as hard as it is to like break that attachment from your child, a little everyone deserves a break sometimes. Yeah, mom guilt is something very oh, relevant God. and true. <laughs> And uh. what, do you, <laughs> what do you do in those moments? So, but like, yes, you had to experience and you had to feel that guilt and you probably struggled with it for a while oh, yeah. before it was like, okay, this space is really good. But what are some tips you either give for mom guilt or just to talk towards that a little? Um, just talking through it as a whole, speaking of like the benefits that it is for both a child and you to have that time away. It doesn't mean that you need like 12 hours apart some days, even if it's just like 45 minutes to oh, get out yeah. of the house. House. I know if I go to the gym for like an hour, a class, I come home and I'm like pumped for the rest of the night. Or if I go do something as simple as like get my nails done, I come home and I'm like, look what mommy did. And it's like Fallon's pumped for me. And I'm like, you love this. Yeah. Um, so I definitely use the reminders like that. And going back from the fact that you can't pour from an empty cup. Um, and so also mom guilt is something that doesn't ever fully go away. Uh, even being two and a half, oh my God, two and a half years postpartum, I still even like being gone. This is the longest I've been without Fallon by myself anyway, I guess, for since she was born. And I like love the fact that I get to just have some quiet and have some peace. But I'm also like, <clears throat> well, she's just at home, like probably crying because she can't sleep because I'm not home putting her to bed. So I'm like, well, this is stupid. I should be <laughs> home. But like, she's fine. Like yeah. she's got her father. She doesn't even freak out about it during the day. But it's just something that comes in waves. And explaining that is also, I feel like, really helpful because no one explained that to me. Yeah. It was just like, you're constantly going to feel like a piece of shit if you leave your kid. And I was <laughs> like, well, you're really not, but it is going to come and go. <laughs> yeah. And I, I love that you use that example of just being able to like be in a better mood when you get back and being able to be so present in those moments. And I feel like it's very similar in different types of relationships. So yes. It's not that if I'm away from Alex and I have a fun time that I'm like hurting him and right. I should feel guilty for having a fun time. It's that we both need time together and quality time together. We also need quality alone time and then quality time with other people. And sometimes we are together when we are with those other people, but we need all of those dynamics for things to work. Mm -hmm. And with kids, it's obviously different than an actual relationship, <laughs> right. but it's the same concept being applied of, yeah, they might not fully understand all of their feelings and they might cry or they might um, be frustrated that you are gone or ask for you to come back. But that's because that's all that they've known and they are still learning boundaries, their feelings, how to express themselves. And you as the adult in the situation have to recognize how do I show up best for this child standing in front of me or sitting in front of me? Whatever they it can't is. can't stand yet. <laughs> yeah. um, it's like, 
I need to show them what it is to live a lifestyle that I feel proud of and that I can show up for them for right. and show them that it's not bad if we have time apart because that can make the time together so much sweeter. Right, exactly. Like I know when I get home Saturday, I'm going to be so pumped to like yes. just hang out with her all weekend after just like working out so hard, but also having a break in a sense. And I'm just, I was telling Sue this morning, I was like, I got through so much work this morning so I can like get home and just hang out with Fallon all weekend because we'll both be so pumped to see each other. I mean, yeah. Zach too. I can't wait to see Zach. Yeah, sure. Well, I can't wait to see my husband, but I just am so pumped to see Fallon when I get home. <laughs> Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box and we would love to get on a call with you. Now with that and getting that time for yourself, what are some ways that you do it? Because like we said, it's not easy, but (laughs) what are ways that you get that in for yourself? Speaking to others about it um, and finding some way to hold yourself accountable to do it. So I know it's easier said than done, of course, (laughs) but scheduling things in advance, putting it like, okay, this day I am unavailable to do X, Y, and Z because I'm going to go do something. And having the accountability of like, for example, this trip again, like I have to go. It's on the schedule for this date. And now like there's no excuses for me to not show up. And then other things with like events or even just making an appointment for yourself, having something that you honestly just can't back out of is the first thing that I tell clients is like set it like a meeting that you would have for work. Schedule it out however far in advance that you need to schedule it out so that way you can not skip it and you cannot cancel it and it's something that you plan for and then also just communicating your needs to those around you um, whether that be like family members the babysitter that you have your spouse once again making it known that this is important to you um, because like you said your family wants to support you your family wants you to be the best version of yourself they want you to be the best mother that you can be so leaning on those people and being like hey i would really love it if like friday night i could have like two hours to myself or two hours to go have date night and in most cases they'll be like hell yeah like you deserve that um so communication and planning go so far um working through that especially just things add up all day every day so it's easy to let it slip through the cracks Mm -hmm. but if you have it set in stone and you talk about it to other people it's easier the planning is huge and just like scheduling it Mm -hmm. because I would have things let's say on a to-do list so I plan to do it but if I didn't have it scheduled for when I was going to do it I would notice oh that's on my to-do list literally going from day to day to day if I'll get that done the next day versus like I now am a lot of my clients and people in my life know I am like tied to my Google calendar in, in a positive way, right, not in yeah. like a, oh, it r- rules me, but <laughs> in a way of I put things in there of this is what I'm doing at that time. And I do treat my training sessions like it's an appointment right. that I can't miss. And when people ask me about, oh, can we we meet at this time or can we meet at that? Oh, it's in the calendar. Nope, I'm busy at that time. Right. Can you do this time? And even just me seeing it makes me realize, oh, it's a priority. It's on the schedule. And it allows me to say you're doing it at this time. Now, that time might have to change because life happens and we have to pivot from different situations, but having it in the schedule allows you to make a plan to change it somewhere else instead of just feeling like you're moving it from day to day to day, hoping that it gets done. Because I'll tell you, I've never gotten something done by just hoping it's going to get done (laughs) and not making time for it. Literally. (laughs) Ever. In fact, I've literally had cleaning out my closet on my to-do list going week to week, Saturday to Saturday to Saturday. (laughs) And I haven't put it on my calendar. And I'm like, why have I not gotten this done yet? And it's because I haven't specifically scheduled, this is when I'm going to set aside time. And this is when I'm going to do that. And that also speaks to, again, what's for your family to see of, okay, this is what I'm doing at this time. This is an expectation that I get this time. And a lot of times when I see like families talking about scheduling and how they make time for themselves of sometimes it does have to be at odd hours. Oh, of, yeah. You don't get, oh, I would love to go and train at 9 a.m. and right. that would be perfect for me. Well, tough 
nuggies. That's the not, only chance you're going to get to chain, train is at 5 a.m. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. So sometimes just it's adjust. not your ideal situation, and you might have to have pockets early in the morning, late at night, or a nap time, whatever mm-hmm. that looks like. But it is so important to have those pockets. And like you said, that communication, because sometimes people don't even know that you might need space because right. you think, I'm in it all day. Don't they see everything that I'm doing and that I don't have time to myself? And it's like, no, because people are thinking about their own day too. And they're thinking about their time. And if you don't say something, how are they supposed to read your mind? And so in those situations, even just yesterday, Alex really wanted to go to yoga. And we have Katie in town. And he was like, do you think I can make it work for going later in the day instead of the morning class? And I was like, yep, I'm going to cover things here. You can go ahead and do that. And then we'll meet up at this later time. Where I, if he didn't say that, then I would have assumed he was going to be around that it wasn't necessarily a priority for right. him and I wouldn't have made space to allow him to do like to make it possible for like hey you go do that I've got this covered yeah and so if you don't communicate hey I just need this 45 minutes to go to the gym mm-hmm. then how is Zach or anyone ever gonna know unless you tell them yeah that's exactly it we came up to a schedule for us with like gym and working out I used to try and go while Fallon was at school, but instead I prioritize like work while she's there. And now I go at 5 a.m. like most mornings or I have one class that I like that's at like 630 on a Wednesday night. And Zach usually knows and assumes like, hey, like Wednesdays, I need to make sure I'm home sooner than usual because Katie wants that time for herself and she wants to go do something she enjoys. And then I come home and like I already said, like I'm in a much better mood. I have my second win for the night. I'm more present when it's time to like fight Fallon to sleep and things (laughs) like that. And then I'm also aware of like there are times when he gets home super late in general, but he also wants to go to the gym. Would I rather have help? Sure. But I also can't ignore the fact that he deserves his time too. So whereas we are always speaking about mothers, I do know that there are some fathers who will watch this and you're not excluded from this at all. Um, But at the end of the day, everyone deserves some time for themselves. Yeah, and you mentioned a lot of like working out or getting some time to train is like something that you do for yourself to pour into yourself. What are some other things that you do throughout the week or try to do on a weekly or monthly basis to pour into yourself? Um, Well, getting good sleep. I try to sleep in on Sunday mornings, toddler willing. Um, And then I try to do at least like one friend weekend or visit like per month, whether that be like someone just comes to town or I go meet a friend for like dinner or something like that. I know a month doesn't sound like a lot to some people, but, but it is. Thank you. I was like, I feel like that's a lot. Yeah. I mean, when you have a handful of mm-hmm. friends that you meet, um, it's it works perfectly. And then just self-care things that look like for me would be like reading books. If I get started with a book, I get obsessed with it. So I have to be, well, you've talked about that. (laughs) So I have to be very careful with like my reading choices. So right now I'm not reading because I just have other shit that I need to do. But (laughs) reading is huge. Zach will be like, are you reading again? I'm like, well, yeah, like, duh. Um, that, and then just like getting my nails done, um, even just like going on walks, which we talked about yesterday. Um, just things like that, that are seem so small mean a lot to me. I don't need like a huge ordeal personally, but some people need to, I know some clients that I have, they like need time away from their house as a whole, like for a long weekend, like every month or so. And like, that's fine. I love that for them, but I just need some small little tasks. Even a shower alone is huge. Um, cause Fallon showers with me every night almost. It's just easier at this point. But whenever I do, I'm like, Zach, I have to wash my hair. Like, I need a <laughs> shower a alone. Day. Yeah, like, it's a This full isn't even shower. a luxury, okay? Literally, this is a chore. <laughs> yeah. I was like, it is, like, a full shower day. So I need her just, like, in the bath. And you guys need to take care of that. Um, But that is something where I just stand and let the water burn, of course. (laughs) Um, But those are just a few things that I personally do to take care of myself. Yeah, the long showers is one I often recommend. I'm like, even if your normal shower is like 15 minutes, if you do this like 20, maybe to 30 minutes, if you can spare it, just to have that time to like get ready to take care of yourself. And I have a client right now that's pretty newly postpartum, and she was really wanting to get back in the gym. And I was like, 
like, well, we're a little bit too close to postpartum right. to get back in the gym. Not yet. But we actually are having her physically go to the gym mm-hmm. because she's needing that space away. She works from home and she's a working mom and she now has two kids. And so it's really hard to focus and have time for herself. So even though she's not lifting weights and getting in and doing like all these movements in the gym, we discussed that it was going to be better for her, even if she could do everything at home, to physically go to the gym because that also created separation to tell her husband of like this time I need for myself and the rest of the time like I can be with the kids. And that also allows her to like be at the gym, go ahead and get a shower there, Mm -hmm. have some time for herself to just have the morning before the craziness starts. And it's like even something like that of maybe you're not supposed to be training yet or you're not enough postpartum to like get into the gym. If it's going to help you to physically leave the house, like have little things like that of, okay, I can go and I can do this. Maybe I just go to a coffee shop and I have like an hour to myself to just drink coffee without someone yelling mom in my face. And it's like that, that could be plenty of, I just, I needed someone to recognize recognize I needed some time to do something. Yes. I love that you brought that up. I have a couple clients like that too, where she just was really struggling, like working out from home, working from home, having two kids now. And I asked her because she was like, I'll just work out at home. And then she's training at 9 p.m. and she's hating it and things like that. And I was like, well, what about if we like force you out of the house? Mm -hmm. I was like, do you think that could fit into your schedule? Just even just maybe one of the three sessions that she has right now, you just go to the gym. And she's like, honestly, I think that would be good for me. I was like, I truly think it would be too. So I love that you brought that up. I used to even... Well, on my KPI meetings that we have each week, I would have it on there very early on. Like, I need to, like, work out three times this week. And at that time, it was a huge deal if I got those three sessions in. And they weren't even, like, great sessions per se. They were just, like, quick 30 minutes during nap time because that's all I could mentally handle or even just, like, spare at that time. But I treated it as, like, once again, a meeting, like a goal. I was the only one on the team that had it on their KPIs. But I was like, if I don't see this, I won't do it. So having the accountability of planning it out, once again, is just going to be huge. And making that separation for yourself between home and what you need for yourself is going to be a game changer. And if you are lucky to have a gym near you that has child care, even if you're not going to train, I mean, it's phenomenal if you have that child care and you're going to train, but even if you're not going to train, just being able to drop the kids off at the child care and like, again, maybe just take a shower, shower, (laughs) blow dry your hair, take some time for yourself, go in the sauna, like whatever it is. It's like, if you can do that, then that's freaking awesome. Like take advantage of these different things that you can do in these pockets um, of being able to still take time for yourself, but feel good about what your kids are being able to do. Because I I get the mom guilt. Like, I'm not sitting here ever being like, well, you should just know how important it is to pour into yourself. So don't feel guilty about it. Yeah. It's like, all right. Like it's much, realistic, but yeah, mm, doesn't much work. easier said than done. Right. So in that, like I get you wanting to not only be with your kids, show up for your kids, make sure your kids have a great childhood. But again, that also comes down to how you show up for yourself. Like right. I know that a lot of situations, it's like, hey, I didn't grow up in the most healthy environment with people around me that knew how to deal with their emotions. Right. And like you said, if you get into that headspace where you just want to thrash every one because yeah. you're so upset. It's like, how is that pouring into what I actually want? I say I want this, but my actions aren't reflecting that because I'm I'm too hard-headed to either ask for help or save time for myself and know how important it is on the other side. Yeah, I love that you brought that up because even <laughs> this year, I think you remember dropping Fallon off at school this year was so hard. I'm like, could cry. Was so hard for us because we spent all summer together. <laughs> And then taking her back, she would scream and cry every morning. I was like, I'm a piece of shit. Like, (laughs) why am I leaving her here? I work from home. When in reality, like, she's all over me when she's at home. She's literally on our meetings with us half the time. (laughs) And it's not like she's, like, causing havoc. She's just like, Mom, what are you doing? Like, Or she'll be like, I want to work too. And then she's, like, in my space. But leaving her there, I was like, this is so dumb. Like, I should be with her. Like, she needs me, which she does. Your child always needs you, right? But it's also so great for her to be at school and like now she doesn't cry now she doesn't care I'm still some days like oh I think I wish she cared but like <laughs> she does she's always excited to see me but that was just the perfect example of like 
this is so good for both of us because the fact that I'm crying in the parking lot, like <laughs> we obviously spent too much time together <laughs> over the summer. Whereas like it was so fun to have that and just I was so stressed and like, but that's that's okay. Um, like those are memories that I'll cherish forever. And she'll grow up being like, oh, mom was, you know, at everything all summer. And then just that transition for us still was even so hard. But now I see like the pictures that our teachers post at school. She's just having a good time. Mm-hmm. So I don't feel nearly as bad about it every single day. But it just comes in waves. Mm-hmm. But your child still loves you at the end of the day. <laughs> and I get that space and I pick her up. And I'm like, oh, how was your day? And she's pumped. And we have a good day. Mm-hmm. So it works. Yeah. And it's about kind of what we talked about in the last episode was that sometimes like when the circumstances change, things need to change. And circumstances have changed of you felt comfortable enough or finding a place that you felt comfortable with her going as far as trusting the people with her or it being a good um, child care or schooling district, all Mm -hmm. of that. You had to feel comfortable with that. And that happens at a different pace for each person of sometimes people feel fine getting their children into child care earlier. And that's fine too. I love that for you. Yes. And it's like you had to wait till you were ready. Mm -hmm. You waited. It was still incredibly difficult. And I know you even thought about going back on your decision. Yeah, I was like, I'm not doing (laughs) it. (laughs) You're just like, this isn't the right thing. But at the end of the day, you did need to figure out, okay, this this hurts and I hate being away, but this is really what's best for me. Right. And and for her. Right. For both of us. (laughs) it, It is what's best for me to be able to have that. So now that you can get your work done where as much as you would love to spend every single second with her, you also know, of, hey, realistically, I can't like, you know, take care of her in the long run if I'm only doing that. Right. And so to really look at that bigger picture and be able to zoom out of, yeah, I want this right now, but what do I want overall? Exactly. And that's what Zach and I talk about all the time. Like, he's like, well, you know, every now and then, like, we can just, you know, just stop working. He's like, no, no, because we would hate that. Like, because you can't provide the life that you want to provide. Well, in some cases, once again, every every family's different. (laughs) But for us personally, what we want to have for our child, it's going to take both of us to do that. And I also try to set this rule outside of meetings that, like, if I'm working, I'm working. And if I'm not working, then like, okay, I'm full on and I'm in mom mode within reason, of course. Like I said, like if it's something to where I can have up and she can like wander around, that's different. But if I'm up at 5 a.m., it's because I know she's sleeping and I am just focusing on work when she's at school or like when she goes to bed. So that way when she is home, I can be fully present with her. And that helps a little bit from like the mom guilt situation too, Mm -hmm. because I'm not always trying to be like, well, hang on, hang on. Like mommy's working, even though I still have to do that sometimes and it doesn't go well, but (laughs) I still try to do it sometimes. And she's like, well, I'll just work too. And I was like, no, damn it. No. (laughs) But um, it's setting those boundaries for yourself once again and vocalizing like, so there'll be mornings where Zach's up early too. And he's like, well, how about we just like sit and like hang out or something like that or like lay in bed an extra whatever longer and I'm like I literally can't we talked about this too like I literally can't like I want to and that sounds great but for us to have like the evening together I need to get up and like get going now Mm -hmm. um so just yeah what a time (laughs) it is all about like trade-offs and figuring out kind of what is the most worth it for you and for you it's the most worth it to have that quality time in the evening Mm -hmm. with Zach and so you want to make the most of your mornings and again ideally it'd be great if you could sleep in or just hang out or do whatever but but (laughs) that's not the reality (laughs) so within the reality how can I make it work If you are a bikini competitor who has competed well at the regional stage or at the national stage and not placed how you wanted, I would love the opportunity to work with you. If you would inquire via the link in the description box, that would be the first step. And from there, we'll get a call scheduled and I look forward to speaking with you. Uh, So with clients, I know that you've gone over this a ton with them, but what are some examples of like clients that came in really feeling like I know for a fact, like I've had calls, Lauren has had calls with people that their big thing is I, I don't. I can't give time to myself as a mother. Yes. And then enter Katie. And (laughs) so what does that look like when they finally take time to themselves? Do they feel better? Like outside of our personal experiences, what does that look like? Yeah. So whenever I see some clients who are struggling to make time for themselves, I will ask them, like, what is the priority? And like, what are your goals with this? Because if something's a priority, you will do as much as you can in your power 
to make it happen. So if it's a priority for you to feel better and like slowly get stronger or rehab or whatever it may be, you will make time for it. So I have that honest conversation with them. And I'm like, okay, so this is what we're dealing with. These are your days. I know they're hectic and crazy, but where can we put in just like a 30 minute workout three times a week? Or where can we put in like you just even waking up 20 minutes earlier and like doing some yoga? Um, and I, I'm not like, here's an hour and a half training session, get 10,000 <laughs> steps every day. And you like, you better hit this because that's not going to be realistic for someone in that space. But once they start checking off those goals of like, okay, I can do these 30 minute sessions you see their confidence start to build and you see their motivation start to go up and they'll come in their next check and they're like, I feel so good. You'll never guess what I got to do last week. I did X, Y, and Z and like, I can't wait to get after it this week. And I'm like, hell yeah, like this is awesome. And then they gradually just get more in tune because they're feeling so much better. Mm -hmm. And I even have someone that I'm thinking of right now. She'll be like, now this week I want to do like one more yoga session and it also paid off last week because I could tell how much better I felt around my kids and around my husband because I was comfortable, I was confident, and I knew that I had taken care of myself already. So now I could just put everything with them for the rest of the night. And I was like, this just I makes me that. so You're happy. Like, Perfect. Screenshot. I yeah, I was like, save. We're going to tell everyone how great you are. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that because, again, it, it feels so hard to do mm -hmm. and it feels like it's the thing that is – the least like, important. The least important. Yeah. You feel so much resistance because it feels like this isn't the right thing to do. Right. But we see it time and time again of once someone does it, everything changes. Because like you mentioned, it is a domino effect mm -hmm. of not only how you feel about yourself and your confidence, but how you can show up for others. And the times that I have felt the most unfulfilled in work and the most worn down and the most unhappy are the times that I don't take any time for myself. And I recognize like you can do anything that you want to do. You just can't do it all at once. Right. And so once I was able to truly conceptualize that, I knew right. it to be right. true. But once I was able to truly conceptualize it, it was, okay, what are my priorities right now and how does this need to fit? And with saying a priority, I know that especially you've heard things like we all have the same 24 hours in a day, or instead of saying you don't have time for it, say it's not a priority. And some of those rub me the wrong way yes. just because – while we do all physically have the same 24 hours, we all have very different circumstances. Right. Very different lives. <laughs> very different lives that need to fill that. But then the other side with the whole priority is that you can have more than one priority, but that means that there are competing priorities, which is completely fine, but you have to be very clear about what order those priorities are in. Yes. Because, for example, I know that I had used this during my prep, but prep had to be a number one one priority for it to be worth it to do, first of all. But it had to be a number one priority for me to be able to excel in that. And I struggled with that because as I was going through it, I realized it's actually not what I want to be my number one priority. And that was very eye-opening for me to see, okay, how do I need to reorganize these priorities to make them work for me? And if I say I care about this thing, then I right. do want to make time for it. I do want to make it a priority. So fitness and my health are always a top priority for me. But sometimes there are competing priorities. If something with family comes up or something with work comes up. But at the end of the day, like my health is still always number one. Because again, you can't do anything if you don't have that. Exactly. And I have been reminded of that time and time yes. again <laughs> in some very positive and or some very negative ways of recognizing when I I lose my health or someone near me loses their health of, oh my gosh, none of it matters right. unless you have your health. And your health includes more than just the, the people around you. It's looking at your physical health, your mental health, your social health, your your spiritual health, however you want to define it, there's so many sides to health. And if you really do want to make it that you're caring for your child, the best way you can do that is show them to care about your health. And it's to take care of yourself so you can 
continue to take care of them. Exactly. And showing them like, hey, like mom is doing, mom's working out or like mom's eating nutrient dense foods and that becomes something that they aspire to do too. And so it's not all about like showing them, teaching them, but it kind of is because if they see you making yourself a priority, like you said earlier, or if they see you going to the gym, like to them, they grow up seeing that and you're instilling those habits in them. So whenever like I tell family, like mommy's going to go work out. She says, okay, go work out. Like she thinks it's cool. <laughs> yeah. Or if we have to do like a home workout, she'll do like squats with me. Granted, <laughs> within reason, she's a toddler, of course. So like, but she wants to be a part of that. And she knows like mom and dad work out. Like mm-hmm. she doesn't think anything of it. She just knows like, oh, that's what you're doing. Okay. Or if we're like eating dinner and we give her what we eat half the time. And she is like, oh, okay. And we'll go places and we'll be with friends or family and she'll be eating like grilled chicken and like, I don't know, like applesauce or something toddler friendly, but still not mac and cheese and chicken tenders, which she does eat, but not like (laughs) every every day. Uh Yeah. She does eat those. We're not like saying that those are bad, but we eat that in front of her. So it's not shocking for her to get like grilled chicken at a restaurant because she's like, oh, chicken. Okay. And we give her some ketchup and she just goes to town and we'll have comments or people be like, oh, like that's all she eats. We're like, well, no, that's not all she eats, but like that's normal for her. Mm -hmm. Like she eats eggs and oatmeal for breakfast. And someone made a joke one time on my Instagram story when I posted, they're like, you're feeding your kid like a bodybuilder. And I was like, no, I'm just feeding (laughs) her. She's a tank. Okay. She's ready to go. (laughs) First of all, like there's a reason. No, I'm just kidding. Um, But I was like, no, like these are nutrient dense foods and she asked for them. Like she'll ask for Greek yogurt. She asks for oatmeal. And that's just something that Zach and I always talk about too. Like it rubs off on her. Mm -hmm. And she just is like, oh, this is what mom and dad do. And like, I'm used to it. Okay. So I think that's always something that goes back to showing them leading by example as well, because it's just going to be amazing for them to grow up in that environment and see those habits instilled. Yeah. And I think that of things that really matter, especially like within physique development, what we all relate to as the coaches or just the whole staff is finding something that is sustainable and maintainable. And we also, that means longevity is included in that. And so for you to be able to be the best version of yourself, that might change through the years of what you can do to pour into yourself or what that time allotment looks like. But it's about creating that for your life so that you can maintain it. You can sustain it and you can create longevity for yourself but also again show that example of this is what it looks like to live a balanced lifestyle to have boundaries to have goals for yourself and to really be present in the time that you're at because I can tell you I would one million percent to this day as a child and everything in between I would much rather have one hour of quality time where you are very present than me than six hours where you're half there. Exactly. Like, it could be 12 hours when you're half there and the one hour still matters so much more. I agree with that. And 000%. so like knowing that as a human being, it's like, why wouldn't I treat other people that same way right. of if I can be very present with them? And like you talked about boundaries of like, okay, I'm working now, I'm training now, but then I'm, I'm mom when I'm right. here. It's like that I'm huge on boundaries of like, once I leave my office or once I turn this off, it's like, I'm out of work. I'm in sue mode. This is like, what I'm doing. And you need those separations to be able to really excel in what you're doing. Because if you try to do, again, everything at once, you can't do it. You can do anything you want, but but not everything (laughs) at once. And so being able to take those times of, I am going to take this 45 minutes to an hour for myself, um, and then I'm going to be so present with Fallon versus I'm going to sit here, worry about the fact that I said I was going to work out and I didn't yet again. Um, I feel bad about my body. I feel bad because I just lied and didn't keep a promise to myself. I'm anxious because I'm thinking about when I can work out next. And then you're not able to even spend quality time with the person in front of you that you said you weren't going to do that thing to spend that quality time. It seems very hypocritical. And so being able to call yourself on that and say, hey, I'm going to make it that the time that I'm there, I'm going to be the most present that I can be. And the way that I do that is also being present in the other aspects. Exactly. 
exactly. And just the boundaries have been life changing for me because I used to be someone that literally just tried to do it all, all the time. And we talked about this yesterday, how <clears throat> when I had her, I was still trying to live in like my pre Fallon mode where like I would do things all of the time, like go all day, every day doing whatever needed to be done. And like that was that. And I almost didn't have a shut off switch until I like made myself shut one off or my body was like, yo, like you're getting <laughs> sick again. Like this is probably why. But once I was able to start maneuvering things differently and set aside that space, even with things like as simple as, well, you'll understand like spending time with your dogs. Like mm -hmm. it just even being present with your dogs is something that takes like 10 minutes, but can be such like a mood changer. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I was <laughs> Well, awesome. I loved being able to talk about this. This is a topic I'm extremely passionate about. Um, and as you know, since I cried yesterday um, on the <laughs> podcast, I'm extremely passionate about moms because I do really just think that they are the most kick-ass. There are so many expectations put on moms and so many things that they have to show up for. And I just like if it's something that really changes where someone's able to speak up for themselves, communicate to their partner or to someone in their life and be able to show up even better as a mom, like that's again, even more kick-ass of you are literally, you created a human being, which is insane. Insane. You literally birthed a human <laughs> and you can feed them if you choose to. Um, well, well, you should, hang feed, on. You should <laughs> feed them in general, but like as far as you can feed them from your own body if you choose to. Um, but you should you should feed your children. That should not be a choice non that you make. Non-negotiable if you <laughs> take anything from this podcast. You knew what I meant. Yeah. Okay, possibly, maybe not. But <laughs> you have like all of these magical abilities, but I think it is the most powerful when you do have those boundaries and you show up for yourself because like because I think mothers are so incredible, it's like we should cherish them. We should lift them up instead of telling them bounce back from pregnancy. Oh my gosh. Just do this with your time it's going to be okay and it's like hey what what do you expect you tell somebody to do all of these things and then you ask them when they're getting the next thing done Literally. and it's like how right how are you going to do that like oh so. <laughs> you need to do the dishes do the chores clean the house make sure your kid's alive work yeah. work out don't look like you had a baby yeah but it's so cool that you're pregnant but now don't look pregnant at all <laughs> It's, yeah, it's a fun time. But. It's a lot. So we want to be there to support moms because we feel very passionately about it. So um, if you want to work with Katie as your coach, then I will have her inquiry link in the show notes in the description box. And you can get on a call with Lauren, hear everything about the service and see if you're going to be a great fit. Um, but thank you guys so much for listening and or watching. Uh, don't forget to give Katie a follow so you can see Big Fal. She is the star <laughs> of the show. She We're is. We're really only there for that. And Duke and Daisy. They're also the star of the shows, <laughs> right. but uh, <laughs> give Katie a follow and we'll catch you in the next one.